I realized I was pretty good at rankings when I started my job. I mean, I instantly took inventory of all the good bathroom locations. I mean, you have the big bathroom up front. It always smells great, but I'm pretty sure Susie in accounting can hear me flush all four times, and that's just awkward. I mean, she hasn't made eye contact with me since I had chili con carne off the food truck like a week ago. I mean, I can go down to the basement. I'm pretty sure somebody's died down there at some point. At one time, I used my boss's bathroom. It was amazing. Totally classic. And Steve got fired for it. Felt bad. Felt bad for that. But, I mean, I could just use Jeff's trash can next to his desk. I mean, he's kind of a jerk. Kind of has it coming. But anyway, we do this all throughout life, right? We're always ranking things in our day-to-day -day life. Fantasy football is no different. Today, we're talking about the top 30 running backs for week one. What is going on, Headliner Nation? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there today. We're talking about our top 30 running backs for week one of the NFL season. Yes, the time has finally come for some real football. Now, we just released our last, you know, preseason rankings about a week or so ago, but these ones are specific here to week one and the matchups that these guys have here this week. I got the top 30 and we're not going to waste any time. We're getting right into it. The first guy we're going to talk about coming in at number 30. We're going to start at the bottom and work our way to the top. It's going to be Sony Michelle of the New England Patriots. Now, I'm not overly high on Sony Michelle whatsoever. I do think that Cam Newton steals some of his short yardage and goal line touches, but a matchup going up against the Miami Dolphins isn't horrible. He played great against them last year. Got him right here, number 30. Number 29, Tariq Cohen. Great chance that we don't see David Montgomery, and if we don't, Tariq Cohen is going to be heavily involved in the game plan, and they're going to have to throw the ball in Chicago, so I got him all the way up there at 29. 28, Marlon Mack. I mean, nobody really knows what's going to go on in the backfield here for Indianapolis, but what we do know, both Marlon Mack and Jonathan Taylor are going to be involved in this backfield, and it is a great matchup going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Got him at 28. 27, Le'Veon Bell, and this may be super low for a lot of people. I just don't trust Adam Gase in the usage of Le'Veon Bell. I don't see them being, being in front much this week. They're going to be playing from behind, having to play catch-up, having to throw the ball a lot, going up against Buffalo in a solid Buffalo defense. I'm not overly high on Le'Veon Bell. Got him at 27. 26, Kareem Hunt. Now we have this, you know, tandem in the backfield with Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb, and Cleveland. A difficult matchup going up against Baltimore, but Kareem Hunt's going to see time in the backfield and in the slot. Be involved in the passing game and going to give you that safe floor on a weekly basis. Got Kareem Hunt, 26. 25 is Raheem Mostert, San Francisco 49ers. What kind of split is in this backfield with Tevin Coleman and possibly even Jarek McKinnon? I mean, they're going to be looking for pass catching options in this offense because everybody is hurt on the outside. But Raheem Mostert struggled last year against the Arizona Cardinals, and they're very underrated. Ours is the Arizona Cardinals run defense. I don't hate Raheem Mostert. I just have him more as a flex option at best this week. Got him down here. Number 25. Number 24, Devin Singletary. Talked about this matchup a few moments ago with the Jets. I expect Buffalo to have a lead. With a lead, they can rely more on their running game. Devin Singletary and Zach Moss. I am not buying into the fact that Zach Moss is just going to come in here and overtake Devin Singletary altogether. Still like the potential upside, the pass catching ability, and the efficiency got Devin Singletary at number 24. 23, Jordan Howard, Miami Dolphins. Difficult matchup, right? Going up against New England. But it's easier to run on New England than it is to throw on New England. They've improved this Miami Dolphins offense and defense in the offseason, and they really want to establish the running game early. Jordan Howard's at 23. 22, James White. Can he be a version of Cam Newton's new Christian McCaffrey in this offense? A pass-catching running back out of the backfield on a team that needs some pass-catching options. Nikhil Harry struggling to separate in practice. You got Julian Edelman. Is he still going to be the Julian Edelman of old? Or is that just a connection with Tom Brady? We need to wait and see. James White may be the safest option in this offense. Got him at 22. Number 21 is Jonathan Taylor of the Indianapolis Colts. We already talked about Marlon Mack. Here's Jonathan Taylor. Why are they both so high? Well, it's because they're still playing Jacksonville, and Jacksonville is that bad. I like the potential big play upside of Jonathan Taylor a little bit more of, than Marlon Mack, so I got Jonathan Taylor higher right here at 21. Number 20 is Leonard Fournette of now the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and honestly, I want to put him a lot higher, but I do think that Ronald Jones is involved here at least for the first week. Yes, Fournette's going to have a role, a huge role rest of season, but he's only been in town for about a week or so, so it may take him a little bit longer to get that full workload. If there's going to be a heavy split in this backfield, it's going to be week one. I have Leonard Fournette trending up, 
However, I just can't guarantee he's going to get the bulk of the work here this week. Number 19, David Johnson. A great matchup going up against the Chiefs. And there's a potential that Brandon Cooks is really limited this week. And if that's the case, we may need to see more passing weapons, more passing out of the backfield, giving David Johnson a little bit of a safer floor because it gives him that pass catching upside. The ceiling may be somewhat limited because I expect a heavy dose of the passing game here, but it gives him that safe floor. Got him at 19. Number 18. Chris Carson, Seattle Seahawks, and he seems to be healthy, right? And as long as he's healthy, he's good to go. Does the health last all year? That's a question mark, but we're only looking at week one. Like Chris Carson, the potential volume got him at 18. 17, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, the rookie. Uh, and I probably have him a little bit lower than a few other people do also, but his first NFL game, his first NFL touch is going to be tonight in the first NFL game of the season. There's going to be involvement by other running backs in this backfield. We're going to see Daryl Williams at times. Yes, the bulk of it's probably going to go towards Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, but I don't expect him to go out there and get 20-25 touches in this his first ever NFL game, first ever NFL touch. I'm just tempering expectations slightly. Got him right here at 17. Number 16, Mark Ingram, a running back who everybody just always wants to forget about. Yeah, I like J.K. Dobbins too, but I like J.K. Dobbins a lot in 2021. 2020, still let me some Mark Ingram going up against the, the Browns. Got him right here at number 16. Number 15, Aaron Jones, Green Bay Packers. He absolutely killed the Vikings last year, but the Vikings defense is slightly improved here. Still going to be a solid week for Aaron Jones, more than likely. He's your running back too. I have him ranked right here as a high-end running back too. Got Aaron Jones at 15. 14, Miles Sanders, and honestly, he's trending down at the moment. Uh, you know, we just don't know about this injury and how much it's really going to limit him here in week one. There's a good chance that he doesn't see a full workload, and we see a little bit more Boston Scott. If we start to get more word closer to the games on Sunday, Miles Sanders may continue to fall down these rankings. Something to pay attention to here in the coming days. Number 13, Todd Gurley, Atlanta Falcons. People still don't want to trust Todd Gurley. They're afraid of the arthritis, and I get it. Yeah, the arthritis is a real thing in his knee. However, it's week one. He's healthy. He's good to go in a decent matchup going up against the Seattle Seahawks. We should see Todd Gurley going out there and getting, on average, 16 to 20 touches here to start the season. I don't hate that. I love the involvement in the passing game, and I love how Julio and, and uh, Calvin Ridley are on the outside pulling the defenders outside of the box. Got Todd Gurley at number 13. Number 12, James Conner, Pittsburgh Steelers. He's healthy. Big Ben seems healthy. They got Juju, Deontay Johnson. They got Eric Ebron, the tight end position. They have options to pull defenders outside of the box, and James Conner looks great. He posted a picture this offseason where his back was like the size of a billboard. He is absolutely ready to go 100% for the season, and as long as James Conner is healthy, you take advantage of it. That's why I got him right here, number 12. Number 11, Nick Chubb of the Cleveland Browns. Got him dropped down a few spots just due to the difficult matchup going up against Baltimore, right? We know his pass catching upside may be eaten into by Kareem Hunt. That's fine. He's still going to see the volume on the ground. Even after Hunt came back to Cleveland last year, Nick Chubb still averaged right around 18 to 19 touches a week. The touches are still going to be there. He's going to get the early down work. He's going to get the goal line work. Got Nick Chubb, number 11. Number 10, Kenyon Drake, Arizona Cardinals. Difficult matchup going up against San Francisco. Yes, however, we saw him take care of San Francisco pretty handedly at one point last year. People worried that he's in a walking boot. Nope, he should be completely good to go here in week one. And now with DeAndre Hopkins in this passing game, that's really going to help open up running lanes for Kenyon Drake. Even though the offensive line isn't great, Cliff Kingsbury can get the ball to Drake in space and he can make things happen. Got him at number 10. Number nine, Joe Mixon, Cincinnati Bengals. And I got him maybe a few spots lower than some people, but this is a fairly difficult matchup going up against the Los Angeles Chargers, who I do expect to have an improved run defense here in 2020. Joe Mixon is going to go out there and see touches though, right? How how efficient are those touches going to be in week one? That's the biggest question mark. Got Joe Burrow in his first ever NFL action. Do they try to open up the passing game and see what they have with him early in the season? It's a possibility. They may have to this week. Got Joe Mixon down at number nine. Number eight, Austin Eckler. Same matchup right there with the Los Angeles Chargers going up against the Cincinnati Bengals. Love Austin Eckler. Love the potential upside in the passing game. Remember, this isn't a guy who's going to go out there and carry the ball on the ground 20 times a week. That's not what he does. That's not what we need him to do. If he can go out there and get, what, 8 to 10 carries on the ground, 8 targets or so in the passing game, you're going to be pleasantly surprised on a weekly basis. Got Austin Eckler at number 8. Number 7, Derrick Henry. Volume, volume, volume. 
Now he's going up against the Denver Broncos, who what? They don't have Von Miller, Bradley Chubb. This could definitely be a, a solid week for Derrick Henry. Yes, his offensive line takes a little bit of a hit this year compared to last year, but like I said, they're going to really try to establish that running game early in Tennessee to then turn around and try to open up the passing game between Tannehill and A.J. Brown. Right now, got Derrick Henry number seven. Number six, Alvin Kamara, New Orleans Saints. Seems to be good to go, seems to be healthy, and this is going to be a game full of offense, right? There's going to be a lot of throwing, a lot of passing here in this game, going up against Tampa Bay, which could definitely turn into a shootout. It's one of the highest projected scores here of the weekend. Love Alvin Kamara, got him number six. Number five, Josh Jacobs, Vegas Raiders. He's going up against the Carolina Panthers, and nobody can tell me who plays defense for the Carolina Panthers. I asked that in my running back start sit video. I don't think I saw any comments of anybody listing any defensive players. That's how bad it is in Carolina. Josh Jacobs could have himself a heyday. Got him at number five. Number four, Saquon Barkley. Very difficult matchup going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and that's why I have him drop down a few spots. The reason he's still this high, I expect him to be involved in the passing game every single game that he's on the field. That's going to give him that safer floor, and we already know that this guy can give you a great fantasy day in just one carry. He has that game-breaking speed and that ability. That's why he remains this high. Got him at number four. Number three, Zeke Elliott, Dallas Cowboys, going up against the Los Angeles Rams. A fairly difficult matchup but once again Zeke's going to see the volume right Zeke is going to be the guy that consistently goes out there and touches the ball 20 times a week there are very few running backs that are going to average that on a weekly basis if you have one of them you rank him high and you start him every week Zeke Elliott's number three Number two, Dalvin Cook here on the week going up against the Green Bay Packers, who he absolutely destroyed in 2019. Dalvin Cook coming into the season, you have what, Adam Thielen on the outside and a question mark at wide receiver too. Is it Ola B.C. Johnson? Is it Justin Jefferson? Heck, is it Kyle Rudolph or Irv Smith Jr.? One thing is for sure, it's going to be a lot of Dalvin Cook here this year. And as long as he's healthy, he's going to produce huge fantasy numbers. Got him right here, number two overall. So for number one, it's no surprise then, right? It's still Christian McCaffrey. And even though this new improved offense in Carolina, they're going to be playing from behind most weeks. You know, Christian McCaffrey is so involved on the ground and through the passing game. It almost doesn't really matter who he plays, when he plays them, what time the game is at, where it's played. It doesn't really matter. Christian McCaffrey is going to be heavily involved and he can make things happen with the ball in his hand. Got him once again here at number one. So those are my top 30 running backs here. Week one NFL football, and man, we're looking forward to it. The season has finally gotten here. We've been talking about it for months. We've been trying to keep people positive, saying, hey, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Well, here it is. It's happening, and we're all looking forward to it. If you got questions, leave them down below. We do our best to get to as many comments as we can, but there's thousands and thousands and thousands of them a week. If you're looking for those guaranteed answers, Patreon is where you need to go. There's a link down below in the description. For the $10 Pro tier, you get guaranteed answers to all of your fantasy football questions. If you're looking for a little bit more information, head over to the Start Sit videos. If you haven't watched them yet, they usually have a little bit more in-depth information than just these rankings. This is just meant, you know, if you have some questions after the Start Sit video, this is where you can maybe make those decisions. So hopefully you guys had a great rest of your week, and we will talk to you later.